Several years ago we were working on a project to make a docking station for this hand piece, it's industrial electronics, and on the bottom is a USB-C jack that needs to be plugged in while it's charging. Now we wanted to be able to set this thing down on the table on its handle and charge it, or if you have this other rear back plate instead of this battery door, uh, th it should also be able to charge in this configuration. So laying f um, plugged in or with a handle on it. And what we came up with is kind of clever. So here's how it works. I first went on McMaster car and found some ball spring detents. And I just arbitrarily picked these because they would um, snap into these little holes on the back of here. And I thought instead of adding additional features to the surface, we could just snap these ball detents right into that screw feature and retain the device in the docking station. So uh, my friend Blake uh, helped me out with the CAD model on this one. is pretty tricky, but one boss extrude and one surface cut gives us sort of the profile. And then what I thought was clever was we came up with these insert pieces. Uh, the insert pieces are just um, using a surface cut out uh, the location where these in where these ball detents go, thinking that I could swap them out and try different sizes or different stiffnesses um, or different you know uh, spring rates or different locations. Um, but we just pop these into here, and away we go. So this piece goes in here. like that. And what that allows us to do is iterate quickly on this piece without reprinting the entire docking station. So showing this to the customer turned out it was a pretty good um, base concept. It's a little bit tippy, but that's not to be expected for our first draft uh, concept. It's, it's totally um, acceptable. So I took this idea and I started thinking how we could build this. So what I was imagining was if we had the ball detents here and we had the device here and it has to be at some kind of an angle. Well, the dock itself needs to be moldable or pullable from one direction. So what I came up with was kind of this tapered shape that gives it a wide base in the back. And, and then as I'm drawing through the shape, I'm thinking this is easy enough to mold. We can have this shape here. I'm going to leave this area for now. And this area is relatively easy to mold. We can even have a base plate on the inside. So we'd have two part assembly. But then I run into this issue where how do we get that guy into the tool without creating an undercut? Because this piece, uh, this upper piece, you'd have to have sort of a core that slides out, but at the same time you need to create this crossing side action here. So what I started to think is what if I had kind of a tier or a tower coming off the bottom and then we split the housing and this part of the housing is the upper and this part of the housing is the lower and now what that allows me to do is this whole part can pull out and this whole part can pull up and you get left with a part that looks kind of like this. From a side view. And a lower plate It 
it looks like this. And if we core that out on the bottom, these are both pullable A, B. So then I just need a lip groover on the outside to give me some uh, registration features. And then a little feature on this face where I can rest the ball detent. So this is just going to sit on that surface and it's going to be trapped by this surface. So that was the idea. And I quickly made an FDM model of that. Just to try out the idea and see if it works. And here's how those pieces look. So I have a, my hardware, I have four screws, I have a lower plate, and I have an upper plate, or sorry, an upper housing. The upper housing is moldable, all from the A side and B side. There's no side actions. Everything has plenty of draft. Although you'll notice this core is at an angle to the pull direction of the part by about 10 degrees. So there's sort of a, a secondary slide action, but it's a big, gross movement. It's not a small little slider that has to reach down into that cavity. The lower housing, or the lower cover, does two things. It holds the ball detents, and they just rest on here because they're going to be snared or in entrapped by the upper housing. So these sit in here. It also holds the small little circuit board which changes the direction and provides the charging port. So here this is a um, this part clips in here with a little side clip snaps in place holds that circuit board and now this these ribs are aligning it in the X direction front and back in the Y direction by this wall and this the end of these ribs here and in the Z direction by the top of this opening and you can see this is a pullable AB feature so I'm creating kind of a shut off here never mind the support that didn't get fully removed out of the FDM part these holes are necessary just for coring out these big columns but they are going to get covered by a rubber sheet which covers the bottom of the unit so once these get put together I can slide this together and you can see the USB charge port comes right through the middle these parts are fully retained and when I put it together I'm able to take a cord there's plenty of access here for a hand to get in here and plug in the device and the cord goes through the groove in the back so that is the overall strategy and with the FDM model you know, slightly improved from this one. It now fixes the angle. And and clicks in place. And we're happy with that. It looks, looks good. It's not tippy anymore. It's a secure uh, docking station. But we need to take it one step further. So, I moved from FDM to Polyjet. Polyjet is kind of a, it, you get it in a number of different colors, but it's a higher resolution than FDM printing. So this is a nice smooth surface. I'm able to check the fits and tolerances as though they were injection molded. And everything fits really, really nicely. Again, checking with the circuit board, dropping in the, the uh, ball detents, and checking the fit how everything comes together, it's very secure. The plastic screws go inside of there and as discussed there's a rubber uh, foot plate that covers up all the screws, uh, self-adhesive backed. So that's the final assembly. We, uh, when we were going to tooling we felt like this wall section was unavoidable. It's not ideal, ideally you are you know around three millimeters with a with a thick plastic wall this one right here is not super thick because it's cored out on the inside but this one was unavoidable we couldn't find a really good way to rib that out without losing this nice clean edge 
We could have put ribs down the inside, but we felt like it was going to be okay. Um, but when we did go to tooling, we found that this front edge was sinking and it was very visible. So this is the injection molded sample. And what we did to hide the sink on the front edge was just recess this little face. So it's kind of an aesthetic change. We didn't, I didn't intend for it to be there, but that thins out this front face slightly and allows everything to look uh, nice. There are a couple of other areas of sink that are undesirable. You'll see one here and one here. These are the ends of these two screws. Um, they were gonna get, I didn't hit, get the final textured model. Um, so they get hidden a little bit by the, by the surface texture, but some of that we just have to live with. The gate is on the back here. And the inside surface is kind of like an SPI B3 kind of a smooth untextured finish so that it slides in nicely and when it clicks in place it clicks in securely and it holds itself in so really happy with how it turned out the biggest challenge with this design and the part that I wish I would have thought of earlier was that everything in CAD is perfect and so I had modeled everything with the center line of the device and the center line of the USB and the center line of the gap around the device um, in CAD perfectly and in our prototypes everything seemed to fit okay but once we got to the injection molded parts which are the final source of truth or the final testing grounds we learned that the detents, which are these back in here, are providing a force in this direction to push this device off center. And so with the final injection molded parts, we were seeing the device jammed and would not engage with the USB port unless the user kind of pushed on the top and, and tipped it back and, and then it would engage which was really frustrating. We didn't want that experience. So what I did is, I don't know if you'll be able to see here, I took a Dremel and I Dremeled out this inside corner and this inside corner on my tooled sample to allow the device to move a little bit further forward. Because what was, what was happening too was that this radius, because the radius is didn't the radii didn't line up once it was pushed off center it was causing a little bit of jamming so clearing that out um, allowed us to get the device back to the center line without or while accounting for that offset or that unexpected force so overall I'm really happy with the with the docking station and the device itself uh, And just thought I wanted to share that video today.